Hey, it's Jason again with Fraser Valley Rose Farm. Uh, it's getting into winter now. You can actually see, if you look real close, that there's some uh, snow on the top of the mountains behind me there. I uh, thought I would take a quick video today showing you one feature of my property that we've put in in the last 18 months or so is uh, something called the Winter Garden. It's a place where I could stick all of the shrubs and uh, perennials and all the plants that I have that make an impact over the winter. I stuck it right on the front border of my garden. So give me a second here. I'll bring you over there and I'll show you what we did. Here we are at the Winter Garden and I'll try to take you through plant by plant as much as I can identify. Some of them have labels on and the rest of them I'll either identify as we go through or fill in some names as I edit the video. This one here is actually a spring bloomer. That's a magnolia named Betty. For the outside edge here, I chose a boxwood. I think it's called a midwinter gem or something like that. It's uh, intended to have this sort of cool glowing foliage in the winter. At the very back there, that's a schizostylus, which is quite young yet, but should have beautiful pink flowers in November. And it's a South African plant. This guy here is Rosa Davidii. Still a little bit small. I have a much larger one in the stock garden. But what I like about it for the winter garden are these beautiful red stems. And those will become more pronounced as it becomes a more mature shrub. I'm going to have a couple of evergreens in here. That's Korean fir. The back here, something everybody should have in their winter garden, is calicarpa. Now this one here is Calicarpa Americana, or American Beautyberry. What you often see in people's gardens is uh, Calicarpa, I think it's Bodinari or something like that, which has a different shape. This one here is, uh, tends to be smaller and a little more low to the ground. The other Calicarpa that's common in gardens is taller and vase-shaped. All right. Here's one that's going to be a lot more interesting as it gets bigger. This is Acer Grisium, or paper bark maple. It's got a tiny little trunk now, but as it becomes a larger tree, that will be a very cool winter feature. This is the first of, I think, five willows that I have in the garden here. This is a, a Salix alba. Cherimazina, or red stem willow, and yeah, that's the winter feature there. Tried to contrast it with uh, some slightly different shades of willows. So right beside it here, I stuck Hutchison's yellow. That's a uh, Salix rubens, and so you get a little bit of contrast between the two different colors there. I have to tuck right in between some plants here to get to the next one I want to show you. That one is called Himalayan Ghost Bramble. And despite it being a little bit spiny here, I'll give you a little wipe on the stem there. You can see that's sort of just a white glaucous coating on the stem there. Really cool. A bit suckering, a bit large. Uh, it's a, as I say, it's a rubus, so it's a, like a blackberry. It'll come up in places. This one on the back here looks like another willow. No, it isn't. It's a dogwood. I think this one is uh, the variety Midwinter Fire, which, depending on how you prune it, and you should prune both the willows and the dogwoods annually to get better color. You see the tips get that really, really bright red color. In behind it here, again, young. So a lot of the plants in here have only been in here for either six months or a year, put in the whole garden about 18 months ago. But that's what I'm going to be after on it. It's the holly berries. Okay, one more here. And yeah, this is the contorted or corkscrew uh, willow. And you can see that that's the feature that shows off the best in the garden over the winter. 
I use that for cut stems as well, for cut flowers. Very cool. This one here is another, I think it's winter fire or something like that, dogwood. Uh, so compared to the other dogwood, they just have slightly different colors, slightly different timings. And I like that kind of contrast. Backing up a second here, you can see at the back, so the whole garden here is on our front fence. To make one statement during the winter. That one there is a current, and that little guy there is a current as well. Um, they're both flowering currants. This one here has white flowers, and I think that's King Edward uh, that has the red flowers. So early in spring, get some interest out of that. There's a few gaps still left in the garden. I'll be filling those as I go in, so that's a big bare patch of ground that has to go. This one here is a witch hazel, and it's an orange flowering witch hazel. I think the name is Jelena, and that blooms you know, right at the end of winter. My second rose that I'm going to show you is this guy here, and that's magic. Unexpected for me because I don't grow a lot of minis, but this one has a beautiful display of, um, of hips. And it impressed me so much as a, as a plant in the main garden that I've put a young one here, but in the main garden much larger and many more hips, so very impressive. Towards the front here, just filling in gaps. I think that's one of those deciduous azaleas, the mandarin lights or something like that. Down here, Lagerstromia, I believe, or crepe myrtle. I did that one from seed. And worth looking at this here. This is St. John's wort. I love those sort of almost blue-green foliage with flowers, young berries, and then mature berries all on the same plant. So fantastic. I think I stuck three of them in here. One, two, and three to try to make a statement. Don't know what the statement is except that I like St. John's wort. This one here is Another Lagerstromia, this one I bought from the store, didn't start from seed, so it's a cultivar. And maybe if I can remember, I'll fill in the cultivar name afterwards. These three little guys here is a, like a teddy bear, I think it's an Arborvitae. This one is fantastic. That's a Mahonia. And it's just gonna get better with time, but this is a fantastic winter performer. Another grouping of Schizostylus over here. And this way is, okay, this is going to be a mouthful. I think it's Cephalotaxis fortunii. Going to be a, a lot nicer once it gets some structure as, uh, as it matures. Over here, sweet box. Just put that in to fill some space. And I think the, the uh, genus name is uh, um, Sarcococa. Again, I'll have to check that. This is a hybrid musk rose called Ballerina, and I think you can start to see why I selected it here. Beautiful. And just tons of hips. Continuing on to the left, this is a pretty common willow called Flame. And yeah, it's got some nice coloring. You know, you can't really judge any willow at any particular moment in time because they usually get different colors as they go through the winter and mature. But beautiful right now and well known for having nice winter color. At the back there, just stuck in some Lunaria annua or also known as honesty or money plant. For things that are winter active, you can't really beat the mustard family. This guy here, I think is the last of our five willows. It's a coral bark willow called Britsensis. Continuing on, I've got actually uh, sort of like the, the gold standard in herbaceous perennials for the winter season is hellebores. And I have a few of them here. Again, still quite young, but you can see 
their foliage looks great and they will be flowering either in the winter or early spring. This is a viburnum that is starting to flower right now. If I can get a good focus on one of those. So fantastic winter plant. And if I'm not mistaken, this is that other one of the beauty berries, not blooming yet, but I'll put it in just this season uh, to get some more. And this is the more upright one, I hope. And at the very far end here, just bookmarking the end of the garden, actually I lied, it's a, it's a, actually it's not a willow, it's a dogwood, but uh, one more dogwood in the garden. And that's just the red stem dogwood that was existing here. So I'll take you back out and show you the entire garden. And it uh, should be a hell of a lot more impressive once the boxwood start growing in around the outside edge. And you can see everything else. So that's the whole deal. Thank you so much for watching today. And if you have any comments or even suggestions for other things I can plant, you can leave them below.